This OSCE video will guide you through what you should be looking for on a cardiovascular examination in an OSCE scenario, followed by a full run through of what it should look like. Candidate instructions. Please examine this patient's cardiovascular system and present your findings in six minutes. On introduction, you should introduce yourself and your role, wash your hands, check the patient ID, explain what you're going to do and get a chaperone. Look for bedside clues such as oxygen, ECG monitoring, medications or any cigarettes. When looking at the patient, look to see if he's in any pain if he's conscious, if he's short of breath, or any visible abnormalities. Ask about pain. When looking at the hands, you should assess for temperature, colour, splinter hemorrhages, coilonychia, capillary refill, clubbing, Janeway lesions, Osler's nodes, anemia, any rheumatoid signs or tendons and thoma. In the arms, you should be assessing a radio pulse and the respiratory rate, a radio radial delay, a collapsing pulse, a radio femoral delay, and monitor the blood pressure in both arms lying and standing. At the neck, you should assess and measure the jugular venous pressure and measure the character and volume of the carotid pulse. In the face, you should look for any signs of malar flush, any syndromes such as Downs or Marfan's. In the eyes, for anemia, jaundice, corneal arcus or xanthalasma, and in the mouth, for any central cyanosis, dehydration, any angular colitis and the state of the dentition. On general inspection of the chest, you should look for any scars, any pacemakers or any visible pulsations or heaves. On palpation of the chest, feel for the position and nature of the apex beat and for any heaves or fills of murmurs. When auscultating the chest, you should listen at the aortic, pulmonary, tricuspid and mitral regions, time the mitral in with the carotids, assess for carotid breweries using the bell, listen for mitral stenosis, mitral regurgitation and aortic regurgitation. In examination, you should also listen at the lung basis for crepitations, feel for sacral edema, and ankle edema, assess for any abdominal bruises, renal bruises, or any hepatomegaly as a result of tricuspid regurgitation. To end your examination, you should thank the patient, summarise your findings, and if necessary, order a chest x ray, ECG, full blood count, usernees, and troponin, and perform a urine analysis. Hi, my name's Anup, I'm a third year medical student. Can I just check your name and date of birth? Yes, it's John Smith and I was born on the 3rd of the 11th, 87. Okay, I've just been asked to do an examination of your cardiovascular system. What that involves is having a quick look and a feel at your hands and your face, getting you to expose your chest and then having a feel and a listen. Is that okay? That's fine. Okay, so I'm going to start by doing a general inspection, looking around the bed for any bedside clues, for any oxygen, any ECG monitoring, any medications such as GTN, or any cigarettes. And I can see there's some on the side just there. Moving on to the patient, looking to see his conscious level, and he's talking to me, so he's conscious. Um, looking to see if he's any pain, or if he's short of breath, or any visible abnormalities that might be detectable. He says none. Are you in any pain at all, sir? No. no. So let's start by looking at your hands. So if you grab your hands, <coughs> feeling for the temperature, to see if they're clammy or sweaty or cold, which they're not, they're quite warm. 
and then looking at them to check if they're pale or not. Moving on to the nails, looking for any splinter hemorrhages from um, endocarditis, looking for coilonychia, signs of anemia, just check capillary refill. Pressing for five seconds, and the blood should return within two, which it does. Also, just checking for plumbing. So, if I can ask you to pop your fingers together, looking for any signs of, uh, looking for the diamond shape between the fingers, which is present, which is good. Okay, moving on to hands. So, I'm just going to look at your tips of your fingers, looking for any Osler's nodes or any Janeway lesions from endocarditis, looking for any signs of anemia within the palm creases, which there's none, and also looking generally at the state of the hands for any rheumatoid signs or on the back for any tendon xanthoma, which there's none. So I'm just going to check your pulse now. So I'm checking for the pulse. Ideally I'd do this for a minute, but in this case I'm going to do it for 15 seconds. So the pulse is 64 and the rate is regular and the respiratory rate is about 12. So I'm just going to check for a radio radial delay, sign of coarctation, and there's no evidence of radio radial delay. So I'm just going to check for a collapsing pulse. Do you have any pain in your shoulders, sir? No. no. So I'm just going to lift them up, and there's no evidence of a collapsing pulse. That's fine. At this point, I would do a radio femoral delay, but I'm not going to do that <coughs> in this case. Moving up the arm, I'd like to do a blood pressure in both arms, both lying and standing, to check for postural hypertension. Moving on to the neck, with the patient paced at 45 degrees, if you could turn your head away for me, sir, and I'm just looking for a double pulsation at the neck, which may indicate a congestive heart failure if it was raised, which is not. I'm just going to feel at your neck for feeling for the carotids, checking for character and volume of the pulse, which are normal in both. And so have a look at the face, looking for any evidence of any malar flush, a sign of mitral stenosis, or any obvious sim syndrome such as Downs or Marfan's, which does not see here. Looking at the eyes, can I just pull your eyelids down? Looking for any signs of anemia, jaundice, or any corneal arcus. Looking around the eyes for any evidence of xanthalasma of hyperlipidemia. Looking at <coughs> the mouth, can you open your mouth for me? And stick the tongue to your roof of your mouth. Looking for any central cyanosis, that's fine. And looking at the state of dentition. And looking around the mouth for any signs of angular colitis and dehydration generally. Okay, so can I ask you to take your gown off, please? So starting with general inspection of the chest, looking for any obvious scars such as a midline stenotomy, any pacemakers or any ab obvious abnormalities such as any heaves or visible pulsations which there's not. I'll start by feeling for the apex B. So this should be in the fifth intercostal space, mid-clavicular line, which it is. And then I'm going to feel for heaves, thrills and thrills, which there's not. Moving on to auscultation. It's going to have a quick listen at the aortic region first, in the left, uh, right sternal edge, second intercostal space, and then the pulmonary in the left sternal edge, second intercostal, the tricuspid in the fourth intercostal space, left sternal edge, and the mitral in the fifth intercostal space, mid clavicular line. Also just timing this in with the carotids. I'll also have a quick listen in at the carotids for any carotid breweries. of which there's none evident. Now to check for mitral stenosis, if I could just ask you to roll over to your side, listening with the bell of the stethoscope for any exacerbations of stenosis, which there's none. And then have a quick listen <coughs> in the axilla for any evidence of mitral regurgitation. And that's all normal. If you can lean forward for me, listening in the tricuspid region, so you can take a deep breath in and hold, listening for any aortic regurg, and then I'm gonna have a quick listen at the lung bases. Take a deep breath in, and out, and in, and out, listening for any crepitations, and feeling for any sacral edema, which there's none. You can lean back for me. I'll have a quick listening at the aorta for any triple A's, and any renal breweries that may be present. And that's all normal. Moving on, I'm just going to quickly feel for the liver, so if you could just breathe normally for me. Feeling for any hepatomegaly, a sign of tricuspid regurgitation. That's fine. And if you can cover yourself up, that's fine. I just quickly end by checking the ankles for any evidence of any edema, which there's not. And I'd like to thank the patient. Um, on examination of this patient's cardiovascular system, everything is normal. However, if I did suspect anything, I would do a chest x-ray, ECG, full blood count, use and ease, and troponin, and also get a urine dip. Thank you.